One banana, two bananas, three bananas, four. Four bananas make a bunch of soda and four. Over here, a high red banana bunch of four. Mama nuns will bring you the banana split show. Cha la 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 la. 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 Cha la 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 la. Hello again, welcome back to Black's and once again we are not at Black's Club because remember Soho is the state of mind thanks to 2020 being so weird we are in fact back in Donegal, Hallian Studios on sea. Look at this, how gorgeous is this? <laughs> Courtesy of our cameraman you're going to see a lot more of that in a minute but we've got so many guests for you won't believe. We've got the amazing Wild Family, we've got Sophie Aldred, Ace from Doctor Who, we've got Tony Thompson, we've got Ian Orr in Heaven's Kitchen, we've got the Banana Stars, we've got all the usual suspects, and we've even got Scooby Doo! Hey Scoob! <laughs> Join us, come with us into Hallian Studios, back to Blacks, because remember, so is a state of mind. Come with me! Scooby come on Scooby! <laughs> year hey this oh, has wow. been my brother said to me this is perfect for me i love this i don't have to go out anymore <laughs> i can empathize I, I love it god bless you simon <laughs> I, i'm starting to get that way myself well by the way guys oh what's that kevin get your ears on no we need pixies everywhere tom <laughs> just what 2020 ordered <laughs> Strange really, bodily growth. Really is. <laughs> is this your idea of a Christmas present, Sarah? Get some New Year's. Do you know what that it sounds was. like to a musician? Get some New Year's. It's Happy New Year, not <laughs> New Year. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Was that like an insult that I didn't realise that I'd given? Sean, here you go. Ooh. Oh, sorry. Actually, do you see what I need to do with Sean? We're experimenting with different ways of doing social distancing on this show. So was it my imagination or were there restaurants in the 90s? You could sit in a room and you could go, huh. Hello. Hello, I'm at table number 12. I saw a movie like that and nobody seems to know what I'm talking about. I was seven in the 90s, so... I oh, know. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is how we've worked out that in this era of social distancing, I can contact Sean over there because I can't actually speak to him. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Sean. What table are you at? I'm liking your snowman. <laughs> It's all getting a wee bit <laughs> Okay, oh my God. I'm sorry, I'm a bit taken aback by Spock beside me here. Yeah. The makeup um, department's Tom, left me hanging here. Tom, that's <laughs> Shall I speak to you later? Um, could you get the chords right this time? Okay, sure. <laughs> uh, oh. Right. Must be a good sign. Oh, God, you're so vain. He's got his phone out. Is he taking his selfies? Yes. No. <laughs> He's taking <laughs> ear selfies. Oh, God. Oh, Tom, really? Both of my Instagram <laughs> followers are going to want to see this. If you're lucky. <laughs> I, mean, I can't get like, them on. <laughs> 
Anyway, while you're doing that, here we are in wonderful Donegal. We did not think we would be back here, but we are. So we are bringing a bit of Soho and our friends, my Derek the Dalek. Ooh, you are the one and only. And uh, Scooby, and Scooby's kind of pervy looking half brother there. And my various friends who are as yet nameless, but don't you worry, I'll come up with something by the end of the show. Anyway, because it's such a rubbish year, sort of like Desert Island Discs meets kind of Room 101, um, we are going to assemble an emergency pack for 2020. Yeah! 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 It's got a 2020 on it. That's how you tell. Oh, okay. Fantastic. So in here, we're going to put a lot of stuff throughout the evening. And we have many possible suggestions, among which, here are the things of 2020 that I felt that we should have. This is up for discussion. Mm. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> number one priority, obviously, for safety. We just need one of these. Oh, yes. That's a great idea. Don't inject it. You can drink it, though. Drinking's really good. So if you get COVID, you know what to do. Anyway, um, this, I don't know how this got into the bag. Actually, I'm going to really upset poor Granny the makeup artist who spent all day trying to make me look vaguely human after eight months of looking like somebody, like Tom Hanks and Castaway is kind of how I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> then, this from Eddie Izzard's Amazing Tour. This one, Make Humanity Great Again. No, I do like that. I like that one. Yeah, here you go. I think that is cool. That's for you, Kevin, as a token of my esteem. I'm touched. Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. So I've brought a couple of essentials. Essentials? What have you got, Tom? You can essentially oh. take this away from me, please. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Alice loves these. Oh, I'm so reluctant to give it away. Are you really? No, I hate them. Ah. Uh. <laughs> because Alice plays this and you didn't know that. See, I love this. Very funny. Is this a real? <laughs> um, it's really irritating. <laughs> <laughs> you really don't like this. I really don't How like this. You're not supposed to be. Yeah, so you wouldn't yeah, be bringing this. I don't really much like 2020. It's perfect. Oh, uh, uh, I suppose that's true. But I think I would just be annoyingly contrary and learn to play it. Right, that's all you It's also time. wood, so it'll go on the fire. That is true. It has multiple purposes. Good idea. Okay, now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got yummy food coming right up with our special guest, Ian Orr, who Yay! you remember from last year. And he's going to do a special Christmas recipe, Gordon Ramsay style, really fast, really good, fantastic food, this way. Thanks guys. So today I am cooking a beautiful uh, turkey with uh, some lovely chestnuts, some smoked bacon, some shredded uh, Brussels sprouts and some amazing honey and some lovely turkey gravy. This is just a turkey breast that has been stuffed with chestnuts and sage and then with a little bit of oil, put this straight into a hot pan and then some amazing smoked bacon and you could use pancetta as well. That pan is smoking hot, that's what we like to see, that's what we like to see. Now I'm going to add some beautiful chestnuts. These are just being brought to the boil with some milk, took off the skins and then into the pan. Absolutely gorgeous. Now Brussels sprouts, half them and shred them from raw. So this will literally take about a minute to cook and then I'm going to add a nice tablespoon of lovely local Donegal honey. You use maple syrup if you had it. Give that a really good mix till it gets all nice and caramelised. This is just turkey gravy, so it's just turkey bones and all the turkey juices reduced down with a little bit of Madeira. I'm using turkey gravy, any gravy would do the job. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. Add a little knob of butter, why not? It's Christmas. If you have some brandy butter, we'd be lovely in this as well. It's just like a lovely buttery sauce. This is great for like your leftover turkey as well if you wanted to do it for Boxing Day. Oh, that looks brilliant. So, we're going to just plate this up. Our lovely sauce. There's a few calories in that sauce, but sure, look, it's Christmas. Who minds? Oh, that smells amazing. You will love this, Sarah, when you taste this. You will absolutely love it. So guys, there you have it. That's my beautiful turkey, which is stuffed with chestnuts and apricots. And then we've got some smoked bacon, Brussels sprouts, some lovely turkey gravy. And we've just finished it off with some beautiful local Donegal honey. Enjoy. That was bad too. Thank you very much. I should be mostly munching that later. It will be left in the doggy bag for me, apparently. <laughs> in my contract with myself. <laughs> lovely. This year, you might get to taste some of it, kids. Woo! No, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> this is hypoglycemia is kicking in. Oh I haven't fed them, you know. <laughs> um, just, I forgot. I forgot. I actually did have from my um, from my uh, wonderful expertise 
non 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 expertise. When I say expertise, I mean not at all. My blackberry gin. Whoa. Except that at home we call it Mummy's Emergency Medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder why. Hey, welcome to Sarah's Country Kitchen. Not. I don't do this for a living. You'll see why very soon. We're not going to eat. We're going to drink. Because that's what we need right now. It's 2020. No more of this cooking nonsense. We're going to make blackberry gin. Blackberries, which I collected locally. Right, I need to put this into... Look, carefully sterilized. Hey, we care about these things. Carefully sterilized. Two litre. Um, right. Sterilized. Clean. Killer jar. Yay! So we go. 500 grams? Oh, you know what? So let's see what weight this is. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of blackberry. That's too much blackberry. One liter, 500 grams. Zero. This is a lesson in how not to use one of these smart alec. We need 500 grams of this. Beautiful local blackberries. This is the best end a blackberry could hope for. Basically, we want to funnel this in here. But you know what, I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> a liter of this stuff. Yay! Yeah. Fabulous. Now, 250 grams of this. And we get to use my fun little old-fashioned weights that I almost never use, but they're great for showing off with. 250. The tension! Oh my god. Here we go. And then the complicated bit. Oh yeah, look at that. Stick a lid on it. You leave it somewhere. You stir it every day. And then by Christmas, it's fabulous. And you can drink it all. And here's some I made earlier. Ha ha ha! Oh, that sounded satisfying. Where's my little bottle? Where's my little bottle? Where's the little bottle that's in the sink? Where's my little bottle? Uh, Here is the magic bottle of the sink. Big ugly filter. Fits in. I wonder if I could use this one. Maybe I can. Uh, Not a hope. I'm going to be enjoying this later. Oh, oh uh, overexcited. Uh, and again, back you go slows. You sat there for a year and you never thought you would move again. And today, you are... Shopping around like it's going out of style. Right, and again, one more time, one more time. Here we go, this time be careful, Sarah. Don't pour too much at once, don't get too excited. I think that might be it. There we go. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is your blackberry gin. What else do you need? 2020 emergency medicine. Thank you very much, goodbye. Happy Christmas. We have two vials of this to be broken in the event of emergency. I think these are definitely going in. For two things. First of all, do we have to take your word for it that they're good, it's good? And is that going to be enough? Well, actually, Tom, do you give a shit? <laughs> it's got alcohol in it. Do you actually care? Fair enough. People drink Aftershock and Jägermeister. <laughs> is... So you were saying it's as good as Jägermeister or as good as Aftershock, because those are two very different drinks. Tom, you and I do not share taste buds. Thank <laughs> We really don't. <laughs> Anybody else been lying around in pyjamas all the time? I'm still in half pyjamas right now. This up to here. but You'll like these then. Oh, they're quite good, but I think these are slightly better. They are 100% better. And they're so warm. Oh, my God. I think one of our previous dinosaurs that we saw earlier will um, probably benefit from these. How's the rise of laughter, Bruce? Nobody re responded at all, so you don't like those. Okay, fine. Well, then, fine. I don't like them. I'll take them out. <laughs> oh, yes. Now, this. Oh, Oh dear, I'm going to have to break it to get into it, I think. You weren't thinking of returning it, were you, Sarah? Mm, what, like like my dress? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking it's about. It's been a tough 2020. It's been a tough... <laughs> it's going to get worse. Oh. Ooh. Anybody remember these? Yeah. Okay, so if you know what it is, what yes, is it then? It's a, a slinky. slinky. Uh, thank you. It's currently not tangled up in my sister's hair. That's where they all ended up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. They're actually doing a movie about it, which I thought, oh, God, that sounds dreadful. But then I read a bit about it, and it's kind of, it's a bit like Toy Story. Toy Story mm. sounded dreadful till it became brilliant. It was good. And it's Tamara Davis, I believe. Oh, right. Female director, yeah. Woo what happened? Oh, yeah. Did you see that? We did. That's why they're fun. They do it with a sort of flourish, don't they? They're also good for waves. Pass me one end. Oh, you tortured your sister, didn't you? Clearly, there's a whole history there. Oh. Look at these. Look at yes. Them. Now that's a novel use of Slinky. You can um, experiment with science. Getting that. Is this molecules and stuff? Yeah, Is all that... sorts of uh, back and forwards. You, ah. you can ping waves at each other. Go on. These are great. Ping, ping a wave at me then. And what does this resemble in terms of science? 
Um, it resembles a childhood without TV. It resembles <laughs> living in the country. <laughs> it's too much time in your hands. <laughs> what, it's it's a, much... a bit like what we're living through right now, strangely enough. <laughs> anyway, so, ladies, the guys didn't respond to this. What do you think of these? Is this a girl thing? I want them. To yeah, know. I thought so. There was total silence around uh, here from pixie ears. Thing. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, I, I'm eyeing them up as the door's quite cold here. Um, <laughs> I'm eyeing them up now as a sort of a, a warmth thing. I don't care what they look like now. <laughs> I'm nearly going to wrap myself in Scooby-Doo if he's not careful. Oh, no, don't, don't be terrible oh, with Scooby. Oh, <laughs> I know, I know. He's, he's a little quiet all of a sudden. Yeah. He's, he's gone yeah, very well, rigid. He's he was, camera shy. He was bouncing around earlier and he suddenly was. he's gone awfully dead. But he's not dead, are you? He's just no. he's just sleeping. Give him a nudge, Tom, will you? Just give Scooby he a might nudge. fall over. What's that? What's that, Scooby? As a child, down a well. <laughs> Brilliant. What, what's the sound? <laughs> yeah. I should explain the reason he's so cold. It's because we made him wear a t-shirt. Oh, really? <laughs> and the door's open because we had to ventilate both ends of the studio. So there you go. Yep. And with solidarity in you guys, even though I'm on my own, I thought I'd wear my mask. <laughs> Show us what does it say. What does it say? Have you have you ah. tried turning it off and on? Hey. <laughs> What's the other one? Is the other one? Is uh, uh, first of oh, ever. Oh, I get it. First of yeah. respect. First of respect. <laughs> sure. You see, we are being good, and I haven't seen anybody for months. But I've got lots of friends now, so it's okay. <laughs> it's a, a little alarming. Christmas friends. <laughs> Christmas friends. Oh, God yeah. bless the trainers. <laughs> anyway. Right, so it's about time to introduce our guests this evening, I think. Our lovely drummer, Gary, was going to be here, and when he heard that Kim Wilde was going to be on, he'd lost his shoes and he had to be taken to hospital. <laughs> so he, he got so yeah, excited. he's a super fan, isn't he? <laughs> he's a super fan. <laughs> I wish that were a joke. It's actually true. No, it's really true. <laughs> the poor guy. Anyway, big shout out to Gary. Gary! Hey, Gary! Hey. How's it going? Happy Christmas, Gary. Gary, I hope you're going to join in with all that we're playing. We can't do this without you. Absolutely. There we are. Woo! Yay. Woo! Could you donate a drum roll to introduce our next guests? Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not the Von Trapp family. Oh. No. It's not the Swiss family Robinson. No. Is it the Wolf? No. no. It's the Wild. No. Marty, Kim, Roxy, welcome. Hi, Sarah, and all the gang in Donegal. How are you guys doing? We're here in the studio, and we're really excited to sing some Christmas songs for you for your Back to Black's festive special. And we're going to be singing a couple of songs, including the new Christmas single from Dad's new album, Running Together. We're absolutely thrilled. And Marty, I believe you've broken a record. You've had a single in the charts every decade for eight decades, which is phenomenal. What an oh, achievement. Yeah. Really, is that... A yeah, exactly, guys. So, first of all, let's kick off with Alice. Alice, what questions have you found on Facebook for us? Oh, so many. But the biggest one, um, so Marty and Roxy have their first ever Christmas single out. And everyone's basically asking, why now? <laughs> That's a very popular question. Yeah. In all of my eight decades of making music, I never felt it was the right time to make a Christmas song. But the pandemic changed things for me, Sarah. Yeah. Because we really need a damn good serving of festive high spirits. We're really all feeling that right now. So I took one of my album tracks and I gave it a Christmas pudding remix. That's what I think it was. <laughs> it's called Christmas All Over the World, which features vocals of my little helper, Elf here. This is Roxanne. And there's a, a double A side, which is called A Christmas Fantasia as well. These guys were so excited when they heard about it. Take it away, Wilds. This is our new festive single, Christmas All Over the World. Christmas all 
goes Marty Wilde's album. <laughs> and we'll be seeing you again a little bit later on. All right. So uh, I'm going to have a chat with God. What do you reckon, God? Uh, you're going to sort things out very, very soon, please. Can I Thank be you. Bored? <laughs> yeah, you are God, Sean. Hello, yeah. Hello, yes, yes. Will you be sorting things out for the world very, Everything very soon? Everything is sorted out. Yeah. You've already done it? Yeah. Oh my God, that's, that's such a godlike thing box. to say. It's in the box. Is there something in this box that I don't know about? It's the meaning of lift. Oh my God. <laughs> of course it's the meaning of lift. <laughs> and I think, strangely, that number might be 42. Um, and on that note, God, I must just dash off because we've got some interviewing of Tony Thompson. I mean, you know, you're important, but then there's Tony. So, you know. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye. Bye, 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 bye. This is what this is what you do in Donny Call, isn't it? People don't say, okay, bye, talk later. Yeah, bye. They go, bye, 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 I'm going to point with my finger in a very rude way. No, I'm going to do I'm going to do a Kirky finger. That's less intimidating, isn't it? Uh, it depends if you watch Spider Man or not. Hey. I'm just going to be very polite. <laughs> oh, Tom, 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 dearest. Yes, little. For he is here. Um, Me and the Dalek. <laughs> Dalek, Tom, Tom Dalek. Is it true? Being an Englishman, what you is? Um, Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Freelance <laughs> ownership. <laughs> Guys, I'm fucking Welsh. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. You don't sound very Welsh. I'm sure I'm right. I'm not sure I'm right. I'm not sure I'm right. Oh, well. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. This brings me to my lovely one present that was going to go in. Look. I got this. Oh, yeah. Look at yeah. this. Ah, all right. So, for you guys right. at home, here's your lesson for the day. Pronounce this Nolig Hona. Nolig Hona. And what does it mean? Coast Road. <laughs> the other Coast Road. <laughs> <laughs> Dangerous bends. <laughs> this means Merry Christmas. Isn't yeah, that lovely? It's lovely. Yeah. It's really nice. I got it at the local shop. Yeah. So, you see, it's fantastic here. It's a beautiful place. Visit. Visit, visit, visit. Absolutely. But not right now. <laughs> <laughs> right, moving on. Next up, we have the Hunter S. Thompson of the criminal underworld, Tony Thompson Whoa! is in the house. Hey, Tony, how you doing? <laughs> you're not in this house, but you're sort of in the house. You are metaphorically in our house together with us. Um, Tony, tell us, what have you been up to in the land of super sleuthing? You've retired from the rock and roll life of interviewing all kinds of major criminals all over the world and having the ear of terrifying, what is it, bikers, drug dealers, you name it, you've seen it. You've kind of gone, yeah, I've been there, I've done well, that. Well, it got to the point where I was doing this kind of gonzo journalism, where I was going out and getting involved and smoking crack and hanging out with drug gangs and being off for the job as a getaway driver and, and the books were getting more and more uh, I don't know disturbing each time <laughs> I was doing stuff and I just thought it's going to end up with me having to go out and kill someone in order to keep the momentum going so I thought no no I'm going to step back and just do something a bit more relaxed instead and I switched to writing about the police uh, which, which has been a kind of poacher turned gamekeeper kind of thing and now um, taking over a magazine yeah I took over this magazine in March and every single day the police have been in the news about policing the pandemic then we had George Floyd and Black Lives Matter and the Extinction Rebellion so I have never been more busy than I have been this summer. They're the good guys and the bad guys. We love them and we hate them and we need them and we don't need them and we don't want them and it's all a bit crazy. Yeah. One of the most exciting things about running your own magazine is that you get to design all the covers and do all of that. And one of the things that I found that I do just to amuse myself is I've been slipping lots of pop culture references into the cover lines of the magazine each month. So we did an issue about diversity in policing and about the lack of black and ethnic minority recruits. And uh, my cover line for that was the title of the 1985, I believe, Culture Club album, Colour by Numbers. Oh, that's so there you great. Go. We did one about speeding enforcement. And my title for that was The Western with Sharon Stone, The Quick and the Dead. Cool. That's been great fun just doing that for my own amusement. And it's interesting getting a different perspective on the way that policing works and the relationship between the police and the community because as I say they do get a hard time and sometimes they deserve a hard time and there's a lot of stuff that's wrong with the police force but one of the issues they have is that they have to deal with us the public and sometimes when I see some of what 
the public do to the police? <laughs> I kind of despair for the future of humanity. I think we're all but, feeling I mean, a bit you, like that right now, Tony. <laughs> so to give you an example, every year the police publish a list of all the 999 calls they get that should not be 999 calls. <laughs> it's a gag reel for the cops. That's it fantastic. Is, it, absolutely, yeah. It's like Darwinism in action. There was a woman who called out the police in a massive panic because she had a huge emergency. Her emergency was that the low fuel light had come on in her car. No. So she called 999. Wow. Another guy called the police because he had um, gone to a kebab shop at four in the morning and the kebab they'd given him was cold and the shop had refused to replace it. Wow. But my favourite, my wow. favourite story, oh my, my favourite story was this woman who called the police to say there were men breaking into her house yeah. and the men were police officers who had come to arrest her and she was calling the police to try and replace it. <laughs> so, so, you know, we, we have all these great things going on. It just, it just makes you think that when you're dealing with people like that, it's going to get to you after a while. And, and although the these stories are amusing and they are fun. It is a bit concerning as well because when you do call up the emergency services for these reasons and you do delay responses, you know there is a chance that you're going to delay someone else who really does need yeah. help. And 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 so so and, and so so that, is that is that a moth? <laughs> it's a police it's, wasp. Near 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 just, near. Just, near. Uh, just, it's a wasp. It's a wasp. Just I, I just uh, <laughs> just hang on one second. I, yeah, uh, please please. Just, just, oh, yeah, it, oh could, you, could you? I've got a. Just, um, just cut the commercial. Cut to, Oh God! Cut the commercial. Oh yes. <laughs> cut to the commercial break. Guess that's me. Dun 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 dun. Buy some bleach. Buy some beards. Buy things. Don't buy this. <laughs> Tony, thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. They'll be very lucky to have you. Um, and Merry Christmas from all of us. And you're going to stay with us to the end of the programme, I hope. Don't you leave that. Don't you leave that screen. <laughs> I'm absolutely going to be here. I think the police are on their way and they want to have a web with me about something. So so I'll, I'll, I'll be around, definitely. Yes, yes. Ladies and gentlemen, put it together for the wonderful, the inimitable Tony Thompson. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Tony. Bye. Woo! Next up, on a serious note, Anybody seen this yet? Well, I've heard about it. Oh, it's fabulous. What can you tell us? He's come out in his 94th year. Yeah. And he's actually just said it like it is. He says, you know, basically, you expect me to be this lovely, cuddly guy who's going to show you all the wonders. And he's going, actually, what we haven't been showing you is that it's been in terrible, terrible decline. He starts back in the 50s. And each chapter, he goes, world population, 2.7 billion. Carbon and atmosphere, 310 parts per million. Remaining wilderness, 64%. Each chapter... Is another year and it goes down and down mm. and down and down. And it's clever. It's clever. You can tell he was a producer first. He talks right. about his past and how he discovered all of these things. And he's actually describing in the end how they're they're shooting and trying to hide that there's wildfires behind them. Wow. <laughs> and there's you know, terrible stuff that's going on. And he said it was never like that. So it's a brilliant, brave thing for him to do. And I feel like you know, he's not going to be that much longer for this earth. What a testament to leave. So I think in a thousand well, years when they see the wrecks of this civilization, this is what they're going to find well, and go, I it was there. Be. Wonderful oh, man. Yeah, 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 really. Fantastic. My witness statement and a vision for the future. That has to go in here. So I have to say this show after eight months feels very different from any other show. Normality's out the window. However, it's a great opportunity for us to find deep reserves of courage and fun and stupidity in ourselves and do a little bit of soul searching and all of that stuff that we were kind of in too much of a rush to do. So we thought that the obvious song is a song that we did 10 whole years ago and it seems like yesterday, uh, which Alice, you remember, oh, believe, um, because right now that's all we can do, isn't it? So let's do that. And we will be, we'll, we'll have various people joining us from all over. Pop star, decorator, fireman, or football player, policeman, player, agitator, brain surgeon, or thief, ah! politician, train driver, air steward, commentator, actor, cardinal, fumigator. Gotta believe, believe, believe. You got to believe, believe, believe. You got to believe, believe, believe. You got to believe. Superman, bigger man, 
or space invader, tinker, tailor, soldier, sailor, gotta believe, 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 you got to 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 believe, no matter what you do when something's gotten hold of you, makes no difference in the end, the whole world circles round. Doesn't matter what you say, there'll always be another way. Makes no difference what you found, you'll be on solid ground. And that, I think, is the theme tune for this year. I think it's the only way. We just have to believe that we are better than this and the things will come through. Um, and on that note, any minute now we will have a treat for Doctor Who fans. Mm. But first, let's check in with Alice. Hello, Alice. Mm. My goodness, where are you? Don't even answer <laughs> that. Somewhere in London. So who is the state of mind? So who is the state of mind, kids? <laughs> How are you over there? I'm okay. I am fine. Walking the line between insane and <laughs> fine, really. <laughs> And since we last saw you, you have another little one, haven't you? Yeah, she's here. She's pretty fierce. Not like her mum then. <laughs> I think I had a first child to settle me into motherhood and I need a second child just to like stop me judging other parents because <laughs> she's a whole other level. But she's great. She's brilliant. I love her. So Alice, who has been writing in from the wonderful world of fandom um, with some questions for Sophie Aldred, otherwise known as Ace from Doctor Who? I think it's more like who hasn't written in is would be quicker <laughs> to go through. Well, I'm not surprised. Very excited to have her with us. Yay. So take it away, Gary. Ladies and gentlemen, she's beaten up aliens. She's battered the scariest villains in the whole galaxy. This woman is not afraid of a measly virus. It's Ace from Doctor Who. The wonderful, the amazing Sophie Aldred. <laughs> Welcome back to Blacks. Sophie, we have a little surprise for you. Exterminate! Oh exterminate. my word, is that a Christmas elf Dalek? I see. Can you see Tom behind you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They never shut up those Daleks. Where's my baseball bat? You have a book out, and my goodness, there are so many people excited about this. The internet has gone completely bonkers. Oh my it's delightful goodness, yeah. to see it. Thank you. It's unbelievable no. because you know what? All over the world, there's people who still remember Ace from this is we're talking like over 30 years ago, Sarah. So I, I know, I know I don't look old enough. No, you don't. No. But yeah, the book has gone down so, so well. And it's the exciting thing for the fans is it's where my character Ace meets the Jodie Whittaker 13th Doctor. So, oh, wow. Uh, I saw the trailer. Yeah. Guys, you got to see this trailer. You're now running this whole charitable foundation, aren't you? And I went, wow, yes. I can totally believe that that's what that character would be doing and that it could live in the real world with us. It's, it's just yes. brilliant and you look so cool. It's wonderful. Thank Tell you. us a bit more about the book. Well, the trailer came before the book. The trailer was for this Blu-ray box set of the last season that I did with my doctor, Sylvester McCoy. And I received this script for this trailer, promptly burst into tears because it was so nostalgic and emotional. And then we filmed it. And as you say, I'm, I'm this mature, mature ace <laughs> standing in this penthouse building overlooking the Tower of London. And that was so emotional. Not long after that, I got an email through from this old Doctor Who pal of mine who's a writer and works for BBC Books. And he said... How do you fancy writing a novel about Ace now meeting the 13th Doctor? It was like, oh, yeah. hmm, didn't have to think too long about that one. <laughs> and I felt that the most important scene from the point of view of the Doctor Who fans, the sort of the classic, as we called, not old, 
classic Doctor Who fans, uh, was the scene where Ace meets the 13th Doctor. And I rewrote that quite a lot to just get it just right. And I'm really pleased with it. It sounds so exciting. I must say, I think probably your character was very identifiable because it, you went through phases, which often, you know, the, the doctor's assistants didn't, maybe more now. Yes. But you were kind of ahead of your time in many ways, I think. That character was. Yeah. I was watching The Princess Bride with my 17-year-old son the other day. And that came out same year, I think, as Ace came along. And he sat through the film and he was going, when's she going to do something? When's she going <laughs> to, you know, beat up a Dalek with a baseball bat? <laughs> and I suddenly thought, yeah, actually, in 1986-7, there really weren't young, feisty female yeah. role yes. models like yeah. my character. And so now we take it for granted. Thank goodness, you know, <laughs> in those days... She was actually it was quite something groundbreaking. Brand new. Groundbreaking, mm. absolutely was. Even in our day, there was one story which was specifically about anti-racism, and another story which was about dictatorships. Yeah, this year has been a strange time. Mm. I think people are flocking to things like Star Wars, to Lord of the Rings, to all those different stories that make some sense out of chaos, which is what we're in right now. I mean, I, I think we've been very spoiled. We've had several generations with no major traumas. When if you think every 20 years there was something, if it wasn't polio, it was TB or smallpox or a war or whatever. And I think we are struggling maybe to find mm, yes. a way to deal with those things. How do you feel Doctor Who fits that bill? It's comforting, isn't it? I think what it is about Doctor Who is that Doctor Who, well, it's very, it's nostalgic for our generation, yeah. I think. Um, and also people find the Doctor a very comforting figure in whatever yeah. guise, in whatever gender, um, because there's somebody who intrinsically is on the side of the human being. Yeah. And you know, you know it's going to end up all right. You can escape into this world where, yes, there's danger, but everybody ends up OK in the end, or most people end up OK and you know the Doctor is going to sort it all out. That's so true. I mean, we were just doing Scooby-Doo at the beginning of this. It was very silly. And it, the, you never think about the lyrics to these fun old shows. And the other Scooby-Doo, I know you'll catch that villain. And then you're like, yes, you will, won't you, in your crazy way. You're going to save us. And that's exactly yeah. what Doctor Who does and exactly what Batman yeah. does and exactly what Spider-Man yeah. does. All these characters that we think, maybe they'll fix things because no one else is doing much good. <laughs> God knows. <laughs> So, Alice, here we are. Um, tell us who is out in the land of Facebook land and have they got any questions at all for our lovely Sophie? So questions is an understatement because I could have <laughs> that we were having Sophie on as our guest on some of the like classic Who forums. And I have had an education because, <laughs> quite frankly, super fan, fandom, they pale in significance to how popular... Both Doctor Who is, classic Who is, and Sophie in particular. <laughs> I got so many questions. I then had to ask my brother to cut them down. He cut them down to 18 pages. No, no. way. <laughs> that was the cut down. Oh, wow. my word. These fans are serious, serious, serious. Well, we'll fans. have one. We will allow one question, which is, <gasps> is there any character in Doctor Who that you, would, you missed playing against that you would fancy fighting so many people asked it there was an entire thread with people discussing who they thought it would be oh do you know what i was so lucky because my first story as the fully fledged assistant was the daleks my goodness was and the then first the following wow. year i battled against the cybermen oh wow the cybermen were my ultimate nightmares when i was growing up so i had a chance through that it saved years of therapy to, uh, you know, to get my own back on the Cybermen. And then my very last story that was shown, we did the master. And so I, I did the big three in those days. However, there are now, of course, the new monsters. And I would love to have a go at a weeping angel. That would be. They are great, that would aren't be great. they? They're yes. so scary, chilling. I mean, yeah. really, really mm. chilling. I've seen them in so many Halloween things. They've obviously got into people's psyche in some deep way. Yes. 
And then shop dummies, the Autons as well, they're good ones. Well, we've got a few here, but they're not too scary. We got our real Dalek. That was as that much as we could manage. <laughs> in your honour. to go into lockdown, you'll probably do well with a Dalek. To, uh... <laughs> Actually, that's true social distancing. <laughs> you get inside one of those, <laughs> yes. you're like, I'm pretty safe in here. <laughs> well, this is wonderful. So I got your book. At Childhood's End, or the wonderful oh, Sophie Aldred. Bless you. A beautiful cover, by the way. That's really Yes, great. and if you look at the front is... I've got mine here, look. <laughs> the front is, is uh, the 13th Doctor, Jodie Whittaker. Yeah. And then what I love is that the back is me. <gasps> really? The back is Ace. This is beautifully done. Look at that. Isn't it? And they did it specially like a thriller. I was so d- pleased. Marvelous. It was um, Penguin Random House. They are brilliant what a lovely <laughs> lovely bunch of people they were they were fantastic to me they must love you being able to promote them in such a wonderful way listen sophie Aww. all the very very best with this you deserve all the credits you possibly can get this is fantastic this is christmas present for you kids <laughs> right in it goes into the mystery case yeah. <laughs> i am honored thank you <laughs> Thank you so much for talking to us. I hope you have a fantastic Christmas and bring all that lovely positivity to so many more people. See you soon. Take care. Bye for now. It might be time. It might be that time again when we got to roll out that Christmas song and that Christmas joy. We were just talking about those two videos that we did. I know. The first one, that was one we did in London, was set supposedly in a village hall and we never had time. We ran out of budget to shoot the opening shot, which was yeah. somebody puts up a poster outside a village hall and it says, fancy dress on, you know, 21st of December and all these characters turn up. <laughs> So you have everybody from John and Yoko to... Wizard, um, was he in it? With, with the, the beard. beard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the drawing in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. George Michael. With the uh, snoot. Yeah. Mariah. Mariah, of course. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah, we had that amazing moment. <laughs> she was about six foot tall and a model. Who else is in it? The drummer looked fantastic. Oh, the drum boy. He wasn't meant to be anybody. Right. But I will take I, liked him. I will take your compliment <laughs> for the set design for him. Yes, I dressed him. It was good, wasn't it? Was it was good, yeah. And then we did the other one here. Here in glorious oh, yeah. Donegal. That's right. Which you guys were involved in, in fact. Yeah, I think we're still wearing the same Christmas jumpers. <laughs> it's not the same jumpers. Yeah. That's yeah. why it yeah. looks familiar. Yeah, I saved it. That's right, I made you. It was one of those elf hats, wasn't yeah. it? And yeah, thanks I, for that, Sarah. You looked at me like, uh, and now you've got quite used to it. <laughs> it's like, what is it this time? All I right, have a, okay. I have a collection of elf hats, perhaps. <laughs> Somewhere. That was shot out here on a boat in the waters of the foil. Lovely. And all the kids. Oh, talking of which, Sophie, the little girl who was innocent little oh, yeah. Mary. Well, Sophie's all grown up now. Get a load of this. Oh, wow. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Amazing, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She was a bit shy, wasn't she, I remember. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And now, surprise, we have little Sophie and her mom live. Hi, everyone. Hello. Say hi. <laughs> Sophie's a bit Aww. shy. We're delighted to have you. My goodness, she's all look amazing. <laughs> so do you. Love the jumpers. Merry Christmas. Woo! And Sophie, you stay right with us. <laughs> wow. This oh, is that's it. amazing. This is right. Yeah. Wow, that's really impressive. Okay, so you know what time it is? I think it must be time to redo this wonderful Christmas hopeful extravaganza. Let me hear the sound of hope. Oh. <sighs> No, that's too Halloween. Sorry, guys. It's just, it's like one of those ghosts that goes, you go past and it sighs. Like, it's just all too much. Um, sound of hope. Oh, no, no. I said I would come up with a sound of hope and it's like, mm-hmm. it's a question, isn't it? it sounds but like a door it, opening, to be honest. No, <laughs> no, mm, no, no, I can do this. I can do this. Ah, no, that was weird. No, it, it shouldn't have two parts. Ah. No, I'm I'm with you. I think I, you should no, keep no. going. No, no, no. I'm, I'm quite hopeful that you'll get it. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> very good, very good. <sighs> oh, oh, ooh, ooh, okay. I'm gonna stop. Yes. Uh, I'm gonna swiftly move on there. Um, can we have the sound of hope from everyone here? Back to blacks. Yay! Hope for the future, because we've got to have it. Here we go. Imagine fairies, elves, sweet things. Woo! 
used to love to curl up under the tree Lie awake, let the needles fall on me Singing carols at the end of the street Like to feel that we were meaning something Write our names and prose and breath on the wall Planning it get to give us such precision Nothing out of top the thrill of it all Except to watch another generation No more sad songs It's gonna be Christmas every day You're all present better than Santa and his sleigh No more bad times We're gonna be laughing all the way To a bright tomorrow No matter when it's on its way Days till he came The way you count now till we're together I wanna wake with you on this Christmas day To hear you say you'll always be there for me No more sad songs It's gonna be Christmas every day Christmas every day You're a present better than Santa and his sleigh No more bad times are gonna be love Such a tough year There were times I didn't think we would make it It's hard to be of good cheer When you think the one you love would forsake it But I swallowed my fear Though I really didn't think I could take it And now I'm so glad you're here This is the real thing, you couldn't escape it No more sad songs, it's gonna be No more bad times We're gonna be laughing all the way To a bright tomorrow No matter when it's on its way No more sad songs It's gonna be Christmas every day You're a present better than Santa and his sleigh That is a very strange hat you've got. I've got to say, Kelly, what are you wearing? What is that? It's like one of those kind of weird rides that you see on strange fun fairs in foreign countries that you don't trust quite. Yeah, OK, I'm not getting on that ride. OK, any suggestions back there as to what you'll have in your emergency pack for 2020? Chocolate. Chocolate! Yes, that's a good one. That's a good idea. You mean Irish Cadbury's proper yes. chocolate. It's the best. Alice, I know you have tasted. Do you agree? I do agree. Yes. I completely agree. <laughs> Sit in the cake. Basically, I need to explain. Cadbury's chocolate in Ireland is made to the original recipe and they changed it. It was the 80s or the 90s. They started putting in more candy type mm. rubbish. It's still the same here and it tastes amazing. So people come and stock up. Um, that reminds me, actually, ladies, I've got in my bag something that I think you will agree with. This is the best. Never mind southern chocolate. This tato, cheese and onion. It's like cocaine. I mean, <laughs> once you start. Alice, did you try these? Yeah, and I thought you were lying and you weren't. It's genuinely so. addictive. It's not nostalgia. There's something in these that is, mm. is dangerous. Mm. I don't know what it is. Is there anyone in the room who has not eaten more than four of these in a row? Packs, I mean, packs. I haven't eaten four today. <laughs> Everybody's done it. Oh, good. My record is eight in a row. Well, that's impressive. In a row. Eight. At night time, when I'm hungry and I'm miserable and I've got alcohol, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, actually, this is what I need. I need the, the <laughs> multi-pack. Do you know, you'd think I was getting paid for this, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, actually, I'm going to secretly stash that one and have it myself later. Anybody else got anything else to add to this? And don't tell me your elf ears because you can't re-gift 
I'll be most offended. <laughs> That's a very good thing to do, regifting. That's I think. exactly what you well, were thinking of doing, wasn't it? But no, no Kevin. But I do have something. <laughs> Is it your imaginary friend? <laughs> Is it your imaginary presence? No, no, Sarah, that's just you who has imaginary friends. <laughs> I have real friends. Here's one. Yes. What's so his, don't argue what, with what's me. What's his name? Take, come on, spit it out. Selfie the elf. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Hello, selfie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You said you had a contribution. Well, it's another book, but I got this as a Christmas present. Yeah. And because in lockdown, like a lot of people, I got into reading poetry. Oh, yeah. And this thing's called The Poetry Pharmacy. And it's really simple. It's by William Seagart. And all he does is prescribe poems um, for particular ailments. So you can open up another day and say, I'm feeling a bit low. Mm. And there'll be a poem. He says, if you're feeling a little bit sad, read this poem. And you read the poem and you feel a bit better. Can I get that? I will catch it. Whoa, I caught it. Come on, more reaction to that. Yes. <laughs> this is lovely. Tried and true prescriptions for the heart, mind and soul. Oh, I know this one. This is brilliant by Adrian Mitchell. This is like short, sweet, does the job. Celia, Celia. When I am sad and weary and I think all hope is gone. When I walk along High Hoburn, I think of you with nothing on. Yes, right. that's good. Short, to the point. Cheers you up, marvelous. That's going in. Is that an in? Yeah. Is it in? Yes. Okay. Um, oh God, yes, we need this. This is when you just had enough and you can't watch any more TV. If someone tells you a lie, you just go. Bullshit in aisle two. <laughs> no, really. Might be different bullshits. Hold on. Bullshit. <laughs> oh, you get American as well. What else? Let's see. Oh, that's, that's an English one. That sounded like um, Dexter Fletcher. <laughs> <laughs> Take <precautions>. <laughs> <laughs> I like that one. <laughs> what do you think? Yes, no? Yeah. Absolutely. It has to go in. Any examples of how we might want to use this? Uh, do you know, I have to take this mask off. I, I find... I find I can't breathe in a, in a mask, you know? And my oxygen sats, they just dropped. They dropped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah. Endless possibilities. <laughs> yes, my favourite present of all. Since we all have to wear gloves at the moment, and normally a mask, this is my one day off, one day out. I feel like I'm unmuzzled, which is very nice. But it's all for a good reason, and we are going to do it. But rubber gloves with a little bit of flair, I like to think. Wow, look at those. Bend over, Kevin. Nurse McGuinness <laughs> is in the setting. In, in oh, <laughs> no. no look. Not these Nurse are... McGuinness. <laughs> <laughs> Be afraid. So I think these are pretty good. I mean, yeah, practical, hmm. germ-free, and, yes. um, and ca- somewhat fetching. I might keep these on because I'm kind of enjoying the feel. I feel we should play some music over that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's good. Oh, brilliant. Sorry. <laughs> Very nice. It was crying out for it, for God's sake. And I'm getting kind of sweaty in here. <laughs> He's really... Oh. Mm. Mm. I'm not. Mm. Some people love that smell. Anyway, lots of fun. Lots of fun for another time when I'm in my what is an under, underground bunker, Hobbit hole, whatever it's gonna. What are we all going to end up in? I'm going wherever that case goes. <laughs> okay, I will meet you with that case somewhere. Next up, the shameless plug. Shameless plug. Buy my. Do single. not forget to download shameless my plug. single Christmas buy Every Day. Single. No more sad shameless songs plug. for your Christmas playlist. Single. It is out shameless right now plug. on all available lovely single. platforms. In it goes. Now let's welcome back our very special guest, The Wilds. I believe you have another exciting surprise for us. So we know that Back to Blacks is all about cheeky Christmas fun. So I couldn't help but pull out, of course, one of my classic Christmas collaborations that I did with Mel Smith back in the day, rocking around the Christmas tree. So we're going to do a sneaky little fun version for you for your show might bring back a few memories so excited do you remember this song alice i do i think everyone's rocked around the (laughs) christmas tree haven't they (laughs) (laughs) so family wild i think we've got to see you do it for real and over to you guys Later we'll 
Merry Christmas. Back to back. Fantastic. Well done, the Wilds. Wow, what a family. How talented. Yeah, amazing. Folks, thank you so much for joining us through all our attempts to cheer ourselves up, um, which I think have possibly uh, made some difference. Yeah, yeah. You? I'm happier. Are you yeah, happier? I know. Yeah. It's kind of weird. But the real acid test is Scooby. How's Scooby feeling about it? Is he a little happier? Do you think? Um, he's still a little silent. He's I was still. Expe- <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> he's very still. <laughs> Scooby. Scooby. It's just, I, I think he's a little embarrassed by his strange brother. <laughs> his strange brother with the boobs oh. and, the, and, and the Hallian Festival t shirt. <laughs> Guys, we got to love you and leave you. Bye. All the best. Bye. 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 Take care. Bye. Oh, it's like House of Wax. <laughs> <laughs> she's going she's gonna to come and do something. <laughs> <laughs> We're creepy and we're cooky. How many lawsuits can we pile up in one go? I love this. <laughs> right. Thank you very much. We're going to end up on a <laughs> <laughs> Christmas every day. We'll see you in 2021 and it will be a better year. It will. Yeah. It will. It's, yeah, it absolutely. will. Never yeah. forget. Things do get better. Always, always, always. We've got the benefits of technology. We've got Alice over there with her antlers. We've got Tony over Yay. there with his police siren. We've got the girls in the back and we're all separated, but we're not really. No. We can see each other and we can do great things. On that note, no more sad songs. Because it's going to be Christmas every day from now. Two, three, and... No more sad songs. It's going to be Christmas every day. Your friends are better than sad. No more bad times We're gonna be laughing all the way To a bright tomorrow No matter when is on its way No more sad songs no Gonna be Christmas every day You're better than Santa and his sleigh As Tiny Tim and Dave Allen didn't quite say, a Merry Christmas to us all. May your God bless us, everyone. Nom, 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 nom.